boy, do I have a video for you today. I stumbled upon this one while checking out Luke Beasley, who is a young person that is out there doing interviews a la our good friend Jordan Klepper, and I wanted to check it out. All of your guys' suggestions that have been coming in lately, it's hard to keep up with all of them, but it's making me look at some new content, and I really appreciate it. So let's check it out. But take a look at this. I don't even really need to set it up much other than that. Here we go. Um, and... Sounds like a simple question, but I get different answers to it. Who's the president right now? Mm, definitely not Joe Biden. Interesting. And who is then? Mm, well, it's, it's a, I want to say it's a, we're being, it's a movie. What? If you think about it. Okay. So right off the bat here, I just want to say this. I got into a debate with a commenter that claimed that these people don't exist. Uh, he said, Joe Biden's the worst possible president. I provided this man with two videos and three articles. He didn't want anything to do with any of it. He said I was full of shit. So here we go. Here we go. Right here. I'm going to need elaboration on that. <laughs> There's way too much things. <laughs> so you can see what cracked us up. Mmm. 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 Every time going on behind the scene to even look at what's going on in the mainstream TVs. You understand? You get that? And once again, high blood pressure, very red face. I don't know. It seems to be a pattern. All right. And then diving into that, what's going on mm. behind the scenes? It's, it's hard to even fathom what end of the, the uh, what's a good way to put that word for you. The amount of pedophilia that's in this system is insane. Hmm. Are you kind of just hearing that makes no, you think of no, when you know where I'm going? No, QAnon? No, I do. Yeah. <laughs> no? I understand the Q thing, and there's a lot of speculation there, but it, I, I am a, I, I follow Q. And, I bet uh, you do, sir. <laughs> do your own research. Just don't hear speculation. You can pull up your own information. Mm. and it I love that. Do your own research from a bunch of people that literally, if you know anything about QAnon, they actually subscribe to like a Patreon where they get spoon fed all of this information. It's You indeed can pull up your own information. It just may not be factual. <laughs> Crystal clear. Do you know Mike Lindell? Yes. My pillow. And do you like I love him? the man to death, but I'm so sick of seeing his commercials. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> So one of the things, he's a good example to me of this phenomenon mm -hmm. that I see a lot in what would be called conspiracy theorist circles, is making a bold prediction. Mm -hmm. Trump's gonna become president by this period of time. Yeah. It doesn't happen. And then I get confused because the followers don't stop trusting him. Mike Lindell has predicted just around the corner yeah. Trump's gonna be yeah. by this August, whatever, then this, and it hasn't happened. I or, agree. I agree. And why doesn't that cause you not to support them and think, oh, maybe what they're selling me is dishonest. Um, things have, uh, they have channels they have to go through and things have to happen in a certain way to happen. I just don't know what even he thinks he means in that situation. Do you know what I mean? Things have to go through a channel and that's why it's okay that people are lying to you and saying Trump's going to be president by this time and then he's not. They're not saying something's going on behind the scenes and you'll know eventually they'll give specific dates trump is going to come in biden's going to be taken out by the military you're going to see it all it doesn't happen and then it's just yeah I, bop, bop. <laughs> so uh, all right i'm sorry I'm on the spot <laughs> yeah, i got you um take your time the question was Whenever leaders of yes. movements right. make predictions, right. such as Mike Lindell, Trump, by this date, right. he would say right. he's going to be president again, and then it doesn't happen, why don't you go, okay, I can't trust you anymore. Maybe the claims of, that's a conspiracy theorist right. were okay. true, because they lied to me on this. Well, you still have hope. You, you still have wants. You still want the best for the country. You want the best for your kids. You want your best for your kids' kids. And you just hope for the best. I guess that's kind of... Okay. I do have hopes for my kids. I do have hopes for my family and even hopes for myself and you people watching. And what I would like to put out is that maybe instead of following people that lie to us all the time and make up a bunch of crazy stuff so that way you'll follow them and give them your money, instead we try to get honest people that follow through with the things that they're saying 
and don't make up a bunch of crazy fantasy fairy tales to try to get you to stay in their cult. That's what I think would be a good idea. Of human nature. But, uh, so, what I'm asking is, individuals such as Mike Lindell will say Trump is going to become president by this period in time. It's going to be on this day, and he's going to be in the White House, and all these people, different theories purport to believe different things. Biden's going to be arrested or tried for treason, whatever it might be. And then it doesn't happen. Why don't you go, oh, shoot, the people calling me conspiracy theorists are true because the things aren't happening that they're telling me are going to happen. That's one way you can verify the validity of what someone's saying, especially if they give you a specific date that something's supposed to happen by, and it doesn't. Oh, maybe the process that they're going about creating these predictions is based not in reality, and thus I should not follow them. But his answer to a simplified version of that question is, well, you can have hope. But why would you want to have hope in this crazy world where there's a pedophilic uh, deep state that Biden and Hillary Clinton are drinking the elixir of babies and all these different things are happening? And I use that particular word with him in a different part of this interview. He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff, crazy stuff's happening. Why would you want to have hope in that? I don't want to believe that. And I would only believe it if you gave me good evidence to yes. prove it. But they don't have the evidence and they still want to believe it. There's a, there's a uh, quote. I want to say it's Isaac Asimov. It could have been somebody different, so don't quote me on that. But it goes something like, I am willing to believe pretty much anything when given enough evidence. However, the further out your idea is and the crazier the information, the more evidence you have to provide to get me to believe it. And that's 100% who I am. I've said before, I like fantasy. I read fantasy books. I love fantasy stories. I want magic to be real. But guess what? David Copperfield didn't make that train disappear. He didn't cut the woman in half. The reason, I think, is different for different people. Maybe you were just a normal kind of middle of the road conservative and then you came across one video and the next video, the next video, the next video, and all of a sudden you're just in this conspiracy thinking and you don't want to believe that you've been lied to so much because that's rattling. That's disturbing when you find out if you were to find out, I guess I would say this hasn't happened uh, in my life where all of my beliefs were proven to be false. But if that were to happen, that would be rattling, right? You would be shook for lack of a better uh, term. And so people don't want to experience that. They don't want to feel that kind of mental pain of, oh my goodness, all the people I trusted were lying, which would be brutal. And so instead they'll continue believing the things they believed. That's one. The other is actually the point is the hatred for the other side. This guy, when talking to him, didn't come off as particularly hateful. He just seemed very, very bought into all these theories and dangerous theories that are going to be hurtful and hateful towards people, mm -hmm. no doubt. But his heart didn't seem to be incredibly hateful. But some of the people you can pick up on, the facts don't matter because the hate is the point. I want to believe that Biden is the worst person in the world because I hate the other side. And what is worse than being a part of a pedophilia ring, right? What is worse than that where you're sacrificing children for Q? I said this about QAnon a long time ago when this, all this stuff first started. They picked the best possible thing you could. All of us are against pedophilia. We all hate pedophiles. The only people that don't hate pedophiles are pedophiles. And then you can say, well, if you don't join our group, then you're for the pedophiles. We're not. Wait, not for QAnon, for the theory that QAnon has crafted for a lot of these individuals. So if you're presented with information or you recognize at some point that there's a lack of information for what you believe, you would rather still believe something that depicts your opposition as bad as it does than recognize maybe they're not as bad as I previously believed. And I was wrong about that. And I think that's really what this comes down to. And all of it is stunning to witness, especially in person in these discussions. We have much more that we'll be releasing over the course of the next few weeks. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes it. First of all, follow my boy Luke Beasley. 
He's a young person that's getting out there and doing more work than people my age are doing. He's getting out there and he's putting himself in potentially dangerous situations. And uh, and he really deserves a subscribe, a like, and, and whatever else you can give this young person. So head over there, give this dude a like. To talk about a little bit of what he's talking about there, you know, one of the things that I discussed with my wife is the other night I watched The Last of Us. So we watched this show the other night. And spoiler alert, there's a gentleman who during this whole apocalypse has got a pocket of people. He has that pocket of people and he is now in charge of them. And he uses the scriptures of religion to kind of, you know, control them and, and kind of speak to him being a godly man that's going to lead them through to the promised land and get them through this horrible thing that's going on. Well, the thing about it is, is he used to be a teacher. Once the zombie apocalypse happened, he decided he was going to become a preacher. And it just so happened that he used one of the oldest forms of control to take a group of people and make them listen to what he wanted them to do. Here's the thing about that. I'm watching it and I'm going, like, why would they let him do that? All 30 of them could have just jumped on the dude and wrested control from him. But they don't. Because you know why? Because then they have to be accountable for the things that they believe, for the things that they do, for the things that they are going to do. And so instead, they would rather let this person take control of everything, and they don't have to think anymore. And that's what QAnon is, and that's why these people cannot explain why they believe what they believe. Love you guys. Give this guy a subscribe. Luke Beasley's amazing. I like this. I like this guy. He's awesome. All right, guys. Till next time.